everyone, and welcome to Neighborhood Journal. I'm Tati Amara. We begin our show in Greenwich, where the people of Byram made sure that one of their own will never be forgotten. For whatever reason, the diamond behind the old Byram school is never officially given a name. Here we go, Colin. So for as long as anyone can remember, it was simply called Byram Field. The name made sense. After all, the field is located in the Byram section of Greenwich, so it stuck and no one gave it a second thought, until last spring, when the people of Byram found one very good reason to finally name their field. A lifelong resident of Byram, Salvatore Straza spent 30 years of his life devoted to youth baseball in Greenwich. In that time, he touched the lives of countless players, parents, and members of the community. So when Sal passed away last April 1st following a long battle with cancer, the people of Byram wanted to honor the man who'd done so much for them. It wasn't hard for them to figure out how. This was his home field, and people associated Byron Field with Sal. And to have his name now on the plaque and have generations for, to come to come to this field and to know that they're playing on Straza Field is, is a good feeling. And I know Sal's looking down today and smiling. He had a broad swath of, of friends and admirers. And he was just such a passionate, lively person with that booming voice and big smile and always laughing. Sal not only co-founded the Junior Babe Ruth League, he was the league. He coached, he managed, he even served as league president. And when the grass needed cutting, yep, you guessed it, Sal did that too. He had to actually pretty much beg to let, be allowed to cut the infield grass by himself in case it rained and the town couldn't make it to cut it. You know, sometimes it would rain for days and this isn't what they would cut, so. He did a lot for that. That shed out there is full of equipment to keep this field going. And him and George Zaccanini did a lot for that. Sal was always at this field. I mean, whether it's coaching kids or, you know, the few times that he wasn't in the playoffs, if he wasn't in the playoffs, he was here lining the field, cutting the grass, getting it ready for the teams that were in the playoffs. That's just the type of guy Sal was. The field you see here today is a far cry from what Sal found 30 years ago. Back then, there was no electronic scoreboard. The backstop and dugout were falling apart. There weren't even bleachers for the fans. In fact, before Sal, Greenwich didn't even have organized summer baseball leagues. Bases loaded, nobody out. As a tribute to his longtime friend, Fred Camillo donned the umpire's mask to call balls and strikes one last time. Try three one. Rivals between the lines, away from the action, the pair were close friends, and Camillo can still remember what the field looked like before Sal took over. Okay. It was not like it is now, and it was it was tired. A lot of the fields in Greenwich were. You know, he was one of the one of the main forces keeping this league going. Uh, and had a few bumps in the road, and uh, you know, the, the field, the league, the sport of baseball, Sal helped keep alive. It's my pleasure today to proclaim Saturday, June 23rd, as Salvatore J. Straza Memorial Field Day. In the Invited town. to address the crowd was Greenwich First Selectman Peter Tessie, who earlier this year put pen to paper and signed off on the motion officially declaring the field's new name, Salvatore Straza Memorial Field. Let's see the sign. When Representative Camillo and Mike Pacino and all the others uh, spoke to us, we said, absolutely. Uh, we read through the testimonials and we said, this is such a fitting tribute to a man who did so much for young people. This was a very, very emotional day. Um, incredible that all these people came out to honor him and listening to everybody speak, and especially my daughter. She did an amazing job because I certainly couldn't do it. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I just wish he could have been here. Wish he could have been here. We'd be so proud today to see this. You know, really happy this is happening. I coached the junior Byron vets and he coached the senior. I helped him a couple games, coached myself. I heard a lot of Sal's stories while putting this one together. But the one I like best is about how in the days before he had fences installed, Sal would park the family car a few feet behind the first basement to prevent errant throws from ending up in the parking lot. It's fitting then that the sign welcoming fans and players to his field should hang on that fence. Because even in death, the players will know that Sal will always be there to back them up. We'll stay in Greenwich for our next story, this time downtown, where children got a chance to feel what it's like to be a professional civil servant, and parents got a chance to feel what it was like to be a kid again. Like they do each and every day, the Greenwich Police Department is out responding to a call. 
There you go. Let Daddy take a picture. Except this time, the call didn't come from someone in distress. It came from the Junior League, who invited the police department to their 13th annual Touch a Truck. People just love this event. They look forward to it. It's kind of a kickoff of summer fun for families, and we've just been growing it and growing it. There's trucks, there's food, there's music. It's really something for everyone. Here we go. Shake, 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 shake. Everybody shake, shake, shake. We came here to see everything, right? This is a 2009 Harley Road King. Officer Ron Caracella's motorcycle was a must-see, or rather touch, attraction. Yeah! This is so cool! We're the guys that end up giving the summons.